with ScreenFiles.com in review. What I'm looking at today is 2020's Juon Origins, which appeared on Netflix this weekend. It's based upon the Juon series of movies, which were the basis of The Grudge in the United States. And it's interesting. If you're at all unfamiliar with it, it revolves around a house where people have died particularly heinous deaths and a curse, a grudge, if you will, has been laid upon anyone who steps into it and very evil events befall them and are typically heralded by this woman who has very creepy long hair and a child who screams like a cat. It's, <laughs> it's very Japanese. Not all of it translates, but it's pretty interesting as in why things are happening as they do. That being said, it's a pretty effective horror film. So with Juwan Origins, they're taking it back to the beginning to, I assumed, why the house was haunted, what caused these events to come about. And somewhat to my disappointment, the series doesn't do that. In a sense, you never quite know why things are happening like they do. It's a little frustrating, but at the same time, I'm trying to be careful and not to impose my own perspectives as someone who's lived in the United States for most of his life on a movie that was produced in Japan. As I implied earlier, I have no idea of their culture, well, beyond what I see in movies and that type of thing. Folklore. So, for me to presume to know what this movie should or shouldn't be is the height of presumption. I won't do that. Though, what I can do is to say how I feel about it. And going in knowing that I don't know enough about the culture to access it on those areas. That being said, Juan Origins is somewhat confusing in the sense that events hop around in time a lot. And oftentimes when I watched it, I wasn't quite sure why people were turning up and what their point was. Most of it comes clear when you see it through. I think it only lasts about six episodes, which isn't very long for a Netflix series. Though, as I said, it was confusing. But part of my confusion has a lot to do with my not knowing about Japanese culture, such as who these actors are. And so, not knowing anyone, no one really stuck out for me in terms of someone driving the action. There's a character who is a novelist writing books about the supernatural, who plays a role throughout the first season at any rate. But just the same, he has no real sense of drive, no real sense of trying to reach a particular point. He's just present. And in fact, a lot of the people in this series feel like they're just present. There's no one commanding the stage. And that's pretty much what I mean by narrative thrust. It just, it's just there. That's not to say that performances are bad. In fact, most are pretty good. There's just not any forceful character who's leading the action. Events happen, people are affected, but no one rises above in terms of interest. So that's a bit of a problem. It makes it feel very murky. And it's not, it's not a bad watch, and it is worth watching. But it's not terribly satisfying either. It's not terrible, not great by any stretch. That being said, it gets pretty interesting when it starts to deal with the horror aspects of things. There's some really gnarly special effects, particularly a baby effect, which is very reminiscent of the baby from Train Spy. Well, it's, it's not that bad, but it's pretty interesting nonetheless. And I just wish that it had more of a direction. It's telling a story, but the pace, and keep in mind, this is only six episodes, but the pace is kind of leisurely, which doesn't work to its benefit. And also, most of the characters are just awful people. 
Never mind the grudge. If Tokyo is like this series, it's the worst place because everyone is <laughs> it's a mess. They're terrible people throughout this series. Terrible for various reasons. Sometimes within their control, sometimes not. But terrible nonetheless. And that also makes it hard to watch. As I said earlier, there's no narrative thrust. On top of that, most of the characters are pretty reprehensible people. I found myself not particularly caring about virtually anyone. And I mentioned the writer earlier. It's not that I necessarily care about him, but he's the closest thing to a character who is untainted by just the meanness of some of these people. I haven't seen the Juan movies, so I have seen the Grudge movies. And while this is not something I would call an origin movie by any extent, it is interesting. I mentioned earlier that it goes back and forth through time. And while that is clever, at the same time it's part of its problem as well, because it never gets to become an origin story. Because you have characters moving back and forth through time. So you never quite know why things are actually happening. When I first heard of this series, what I was looking for was an explanation as to why this is happening. Why is the grudge centered around his house? What's causing it? It's a curse. I should call it a curse because a grudge is a beef you have against somebody else. Now, a supernatural curse that causes death and destruction, well, death, less destruction, is hardly what I would call a grudge. So I'm going to call it the curse, because that's what it is. The series, at least in the first season, doesn't explain why this is happening. The house has had various tragedies of a violent nature throughout its recent history. That doesn't explain why the ghosts are haunting it as they do. It's confusing and I wish that it brought more clarity to why these events are happening. Though, as I said, this is not said this is not watchable. It is. It's kind of slow burn but has very interesting moments. But if you're looking to understand what Juan, the grudge, where it began, how it started, and potentially how it will end, this will not answer those questions. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Have you seen Juwan Origins? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Let me know down below. And since you're here, consider a like or a follow. Peace.